What's up everyone, today I want to share with you 22 tips, tricks, and shortcuts that you can use to speed up your editing workflow in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now since we're talking about shortcuts, I've teamed up with the nice folks over at Logic Keyboard and we're going to be giving away a free keyboard skin. All you need to do is like and share the video and leave a comment telling us your favorite shortcut in Adobe Premiere Pro. I'll be picking my favorite shortcut next month and that person will win the keyboard skin. Alright, let's get started. So my first tip is zoom to sequence. Now, if you hit the backslash key, it immediately zooms your sequence to perfect to show you all the whole sequence. So one of my pet peeves is when you're watching a tutorial or you're watching another editor and they're zoomed all the way out like this and they're talking about their sequence saying, grab this clip, move it over here, and there's just all this empty real estate that they're not using. So if you hit backslash, you'll immediately zoom to sequence which is really great. Even if you're zoomed all the way in like this, you can't really see what's going on in the sequence. So backslash, zoom to sequence. Next is maximize frame, and this is the tilde key. So this is a really great tip. I use it all the time because I'm working on a 15 inch MacBook Pro laptop, so there's not a lot of space to go around. So when I wanna see something, I need to maximize the frame. So to do that, I just press the tilde key, and then whatever frame or panel my mouse is hovering over, it will instantly maximize that frame. And I hit tilde again, moves it. So if I go over here, I can maximize this frame. Again, any, any frame that I'm over. So another great tip is full screen, which is the same tilde key, but if you just hold the control key, it will full screen, and you don't have the whole panel to work with. You're just looking at your full screen image, which is really great. And I can do that for the program monitor, or for the source monitor. And that's a little bit different than maximize frame because you have to have your panel selected. Another tip I use every day, all the time when I'm editing, are the up and down arrow keys. Now what these keys do is they allow you to go to the next or previous edit very fast and allows you to navigate and jump along your sequence quite quickly. All you have to do is make sure that your tracks are targeted where you want to jump around on your edit points. So if I hit the up key, or the up arrow key, you see it jump to my previous edit. If I hit up again, it's going to go to the next edit. And now if I hit down, the down arrow key, it's going to jump between those edit points as well. Regarding track targeting, I can go through here and I can target these by selecting them. But a much faster way is just hold the shift key and you can deselect or select all of your tracks at once, whether they're in the audio or the video. And this is really helpful when you have a lot of tracks. I can also quickly resize tracks by holding the shift key and when I mouse over the track header here, if I start to move on my trackpad or my wheel on my mouse, it will resize these accordingly. And I can also go down here and do it on my audio tracks. But if you look down here, you'll see that I have quite a few empty tracks. I can delete empty tracks quickly by control or right clicking on the header and then go to delete tracks. This will allow me to specify specific tracks to delete, or I can just keep the all empty tracks selected, which I will do. Select this, and then when I hit OK, all my empty tracks are now deleted. I can quickly rename a clip on the timeline. If I right click or control click on the clip and select rename, and then I can type driving. And you'll see it changed the name here, but when I go to the actual clip in the project panel, you'll see that it retains its original name, which can be quite useful. You can also go up here into the project panel. I'm gonna maximize this screen here. And if you see here, there's all of this different metadata information in columns, which you can click here and you can organize and quickly categorize by different metadata options. But where the real power of this panel comes in is if I right or control click on the columns here and select metadata display, now I just have an option to really customize and create my own metadata display, which I can save out and I can even add properties. And then if I, if I want to reorder or categorize in a certain way, uh, this gives me the, abil the ability to do that. And this deserves its own tutorial. This is a really, really powerful tool. You can also adjust your timecode display. You can, you can view your timecode with different units. And if I control or right click on the time code display, you'll see there's a variety of different options here with feet and frames or just frames. You can select 35 millimeter, uh, non-drop frame time code. And a way to quickly cycle between these is to hold the command key and then click. 
and you see it's quickly jumping between those units. I can also quickly jump to a specific time by manually typing in a time code. Let's, so let's say I want to go specifically to 25 seconds, zero frames, type that in, hit enter, and it brings my playhead directly there, which is really, really helpful. I can show keyframes on my sequence or then the timeline here. If I expand the audio and video tracks here, you'll notice these rubber bands. These are showing the keyframes. Now right now, this is defaulting to opacity. So if I right click or control click right on this FX badge, I can switch this to display any of these different attributes I would like. You can do the same thing with audio if I control click right over this FX button. You see all the different options I have here. When you're working with a photograph, sometimes you might have a problem where you bring a photograph down into your timeline and you notice it automatically scales it to fit within the frame size here and I'm seeing these black sidebars here. So if I control or right click, you'll notice there's scale to frame size and that's selected. If I deselect that, then it's going to readjust my photograph and make it the actual size of the resolution in relation to the resolution of my project, which can be very helpful when, we're, when working with a lot of photographs and when you want to do some animations on your photographs. You can ripple trim with the Q and W shortcut keys when you have your current time indicator over a specific area. Let's say I'm working on this green clip here. And let's say I want the clip to start here. I can automatically do a ripple trim, which means it's gonna trim it to this spot, but it's automatically gonna close the gap. So I'm gonna do that using the W key, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna do the Q key. So that's gonna ripple to previous edit. If I go over here and I want my clip to end at this point, I can use the W key, which is ripple to next edit. So I'm press W and there you go. It, it trimmed both edges of those and it automatically did a ripple delete as well. Huge, huge, I only learned this about a year ago and I use it all the time now. It's sped up my workflow so much. You can isolate a selection with the Alt key. If I want to work with a linked clip here, let's say I grab this clip of my French flag, it's grabbing both the audio and the video because these are linked. If I want to grab just the video, I simply hold the Alt key and now I have the video. Or I can hold the Alt key and I can grab the audio. Also with the Alt key, if you hold the Alt key and grab and then drag, you can duplicate. So if I want to first isolate the video and then I'm holding Alt, I can move this and it automatically duplicates. I can do this as well with video and audio clips. So I'm just simply selecting this. Now I'm going to hold Alt and move that. And you'll see, there you go. You have duplicates of that clip now. You can open a nested comp or a dynamically linked comp in your source monitor by holding Command and then double clicking the sequence uh, in the project panel and you'll see here now I have this whole sequence opened up in the source monitor. I can perform an insert edit quickly by holding the command key as I drag as I drag this clip around the timeline. Watch what happens. I'm going to switch and hold the command key and you're going to see it changes the symbol there and that means it's going to do an insert. So if I go over here and I release, it's going to perform an insert. Let me undo that. If I were to just drag it over, it would be an overwrite edit. But I can move it, hold command, and now it's an insert edit. I can also do a rearrange edit, which is basically rearranging two clips without moving any of the other clips on the timeline. So let's say I wanted to take this French flag clip, and I wanted to put it right before the driving clip. But I don't want any of these clips to shift. So I could grab this, go over to my endpoint here, hold the insert, the command button, so it's insert, and then I hold the alt key, and you see my symbol changes again. This is a rearrange edit. Now when I release, you're gonna see that it's moved over there, and everything's good. We can also do a replace edit, which is if I go over here and I select a clip, let's say I wanna take this clip and replace my driving clip with this night clip. I can go grab my video, and then when I drag it over here, I'm going to hold the Alt key. And you'll see when I hold the Alt key, suddenly my clip disappears. And you can see it's creating a box over my clip here. So if I release that, now it's replacing it. And it's completely replaced that clip. This tip is, is obvious, but I just wanted to include it just in case you didn't know. It's a very helpful tool. It's not really a tip. It's more of just one of the tools of the program here, which is the Adobe Media Encoder. So if you're rendering out a project, I'm going to hit Command M to bring up my Export Settings dialog box. Let's say I want to keep working within Premiere. If I simply select Export, it's going to take up 
Premiere and I'm not going to be able to do anything. But if I select Q, it's going to launch the Adobe Media Encoder. And then I'm going to be able to simply use this program for my exports. And I can, I can load up multiple sequences and queue up multiple things to render out of the Adobe Media Encoder. And while it's rendering within the Adobe Media Encoder, I could go back here and I can still work within Premiere, all while this is rendering in the background. And last but not least is a reset preferences shortcut, which I'm not gonna show you how to do here, but essentially when you launch Premiere, if you hold the Alt key while you're launching Premiere, it's gonna automatically restore all of your default preferences. Now you gotta be careful though, because you can it's gonna restore some of the things you might have saved. So be sure that you don't wanna lose anything important because this will delete some of your preferences such as still image duration, just a few things. So just be aware of that. All right, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and remember be sure to leave a comment, like and share the video. Let us know your favorite shortcuts in the comment section. I'll be picking my favorite comment or shortcut within the month and then we'll select our winner based off of that. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel. In future videos we're gonna be giving away more products from Logic Keyboard, including some keyboards. So be sure to subscribe and, and check out more videos. All right, I'll see you next time.